it seems totally normal to listen to a podcast about the Toronto Argonauts. It's the X's and Argos podcast. Welcome to the X's and Argos pregame walkthrough brought to you by Funny Bone Broth. My name is Ben Grant, joined as always by JB, and we are getting you set for the epic Wednesday night showdown between the Ottawa Red Blacks and your Toronto Argonauts. JB, this is a surprisingly big game for the Argonauts. This is where you come in and say, why? <laughs> I was just waiting for you to finish your thought. Why Why? Why? why do you feel that way? I, I feel that way because it's... It, because the Hamilton game is so big and Hamilton doesn't have a game this week until then. So Toronto's got to play Ottawa while Hamilton is sitting at home on their couch stewing over the horrible loss that they just suffered to Montreal. And so what that means is that Toronto has to, first of all, they have to win this game. There's not, you have to, you absolutely have to win this game. But you also cannot spend anything winning this game. You've got to win this game without anyone getting hurt, without showing Hamilton anything new, without having to bring anything out of the bag that you haven't already brought out of the bag. And if you can't do those things, then you're putting yourself at a real disadvantage against Hamilton. So then now that's hard to do, even though I don't think Ottawa is a good team. I think, in fact, they're a terrible football team. It's hard to beat another CFL team without showing anything new, without, you know, uh, any bells and whistles. It's, it's really tough. And so if the Argos can do that, I think that's huge. I think that sets them up for a possible win in Hamilton. Yeah, they have to. You have to bank Ottawa points, especially at home. Um, you know, I, I, I agree with you that it, it is um, a necessity for a team that has, you know, intentions of potentially taking the one seed. You cannot throw away at-home games against Ottawa. So, yeah, in that sense, it is... It is a must win. I think it's good for the, I think it's important for the confidence too. I think it's, you know, let's take care of business. That's who's put in front of you, you know, put in a professional performance and, and get ready for the next game, which is, you know, something that the Argos haven't been great at yet in terms of achieving that level of, of professionalism, you know, as a team, like that's hard to do. And that's why a lot of teams end up winning, losing, winning, losing all the time. Cause it's really hard to go out there and take care of business every week like Winnipeg does. That's why there's only one Winnipeg in the whole league and Saskatchewan just drove off a cliff. Um, You know, it's hard to do. So I don't begrudge them that, but I would love to see them do it. And this would be the first time all season, if they can beat beat Ottawa, that Toronto will have won back-to-back games. Yeah, it's absolutely. I think, you know, it's a must win for their, their, their psyche and, 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 um, you know, their their place in the league. And I don't think any score is going to really get people's attention per se because it's Ottawa. But I do think this can be something of a coming out game where the offense just blasts Ottawa. And there's no doubt right from the opening quarter, Toronto gets up, you know, 14 nothing, 17 nothing in the first quarter. And it's just shut down from there. That's That's what I want to see from this game. And I really think... If the Argos are playing well, I, I don't see why that wouldn't happen. Now, I, I don't really expect that to happen because we haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm still waiting for Toronto to to show uh. us these back-to-back games and this sort of flawless performance. And and we got so many guys that are probably coming back this week. It's going to be a, a, probably the healthiest roster that this team has fielded since Calgary. So it, the opportunity is there. I mean, I'm I'm a little easier than that. I don't need to see them come out and blow Ottawa off the table. Just just come out and win the game. That's that's really all I'm looking for. I don't I don't need it to be a show because I mean you're bringing guys back and they haven't played in a while and you've got you know you're looking ahead to Hamilton and you know I'm I, if they can come out with a win I'm I'm happy. I don't have any other expectations than that. So let's go over some of the news for this week's game. So McLeod Bethel-Thompson has been announced as the starter. I, I think that makes sense. Arbuckle is still battling a hamstring injury. And just, you know, watching him moving around at practice, he, he's moving all right. But you could you could see that there's still just a little bit of hesitation. And I think that's probably him being told, don't push it. There's no sense in, you know, racing to recover because it's a hamstring and 
you know, we've talked extensively on, on this podcast about soft tissue injuries and just their very nature being so volatile. Uh, and it can just, you know, just, just like that, uh, your season's over. So they're taking it very slowly with him as they seem to be with like Enoch Muamba as well. Anyone with a hamstring injury, they're, they're, uh, you know, really protecting, which I think is sensible. So I actually don't expect Arbuckle, even though I think he could, I don't expect Arbuckle to back up this game. I think you're going to see the same two quarterbacks as last game, McLeod Bethel Thompson starting, Antonio Pipkin backing up, and he'll probably be out there for the short yardage package, which again, I loved. And I think, I think they'll, they'll make full use of it just like they did last game. It does set up, a <laughs> I would say a potential problem, uh, but it does set up you know, um, a potential question for the coaching staff. So, you know, if Macbeth plays the next two games, which I think is probably likely, uh, if he wins both, you know, I think, I think it, it's a harder decision to just switch out of him. Well, it's funny. I joked about this with Mike Mitchell from CFL News Hub. I was, I was saying, you know, I, I think Coach Dimity would love to be able to put Arbuckle out against Ottawa because there is... Because I, I still think, I still believe Arbuckle has to be the team's quarterback. I still think that he gives you the best chance to win week to week. And I, I, I know that I can't really prove that. I know the numbers don't really say that either. Just from an eye test standpoint, and I think just really when I try to match both quarterbacks with Coach Dinwiddie's system, I just feel like Nick Arbuckle fits much better. So I kind of think long term, he's got to be the guy. But you know that there's that possibility that Bethel Thompson goes out on Wednesday and like throws for 500 yards. And then, you know, that uh, that's probably the last time you can get Nick. Like, can you get Nick Arbuckle in anytime soon if you get a performance like that? So, well, he'll, he, I mean, to me, he'd have to win both. I don't, I don't think, you know, not just beating Ottawa. If you, if you were to beat Ottawa and then beat Hamilton, I think it's, it's more of a conversation, but I, you know, I, he'd have to win both for me, but. Well, I don't even think it's a conversation at that point, though. It's, it's automatic. If he beats Ottawa and Hamilton, he stays in. Because no <laughs> coach in their right mind is going to replace the quarterback uh, mm. that just won you three games in a row. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I think, you know. There's anyways. no chance. There's no way. If if, uh, if I, I will buy you coffee for a year if McLeod Bethel Thompson beats Ottawa, beats Hamilton, and then gets replaced right. the very next week. That is That is a wager, sir. All right, so let's take a look at the the injury report and some of the guys that we've got coming back. Some guys that I just don't think are quite ready yet as well. So it was a weird injury report today because it looked far more promising yesterday. Sunday's practice, it it, it was great to see. I, you know, first of all, I love being out there and seeing the old Argo helmets that they've got on. They're wearing that that big sort of uh, I don't know Times New Roman font A from the '90s because it is uh, throwback week. Uh, this Wednesday's game, they are honoring the 1991 Grey Cup team. And so they're going to be attired in the 1991 uh, uniform with smaller shoulder pads. And uh, and it's, you know, it's going to be a big event. They're giving away, I think, sweaters, I think I saw, uh, which looked really cool. You can check those out on on the Argo Twitter account. They tweeted out uh, the, the sweater and how many they're giving away. It looked really awesome. But uh, yeah, seeing them running around with those, that Argo A, it just brought me back to the conversation I was having with, with Paul Woods earlier in the week and that, that, uh, that, that team with the rocket and, and pinball and all these memories came flooding back, seeing that, that helmet on the field. That was really cool. But the other thing that was really cool was seeing so many guys that we haven't seen in ages going full. So guys like Drake Nevis, uh, guys like Cordero Law, Robertson Daniel, who we haven't seen since that week one game in Calgary. Shane Ray, uh, which was pretty much, I think, was that the same game that Shane Ray uh, hurt his, his finger? I think so. I think it was that same game. We haven't seen these guys in forever. Uh, Philip Blake was full as well. And so seeing those guys, uh, you know, running around full speed, participating fully in all the drills was very encouraging. It's such a great sign. Uh, but but then today there were a few, four extra names added to the did not practice list. And that made me a little bit nervous. Suddenly Darius Bladek is on there with an arm injury, which I, I didn't see. I didn't notice that. Eric Rogers and John White uh, both didn't practice, listed with hamstring injuries. 
Uh, and you know, I don't think I don't think White and Rogers are are going to play. If that were my guess, I I would say they're you know they're probably not going to go. Just because again, it's hamstring. We talked about that. This team is very conscious of that. Levi Noel has been out for weeks with a hamstring injury. He also didn't practice today. I think those guys are are all going to sit because I think you can sit them if you can't beat Ottawa just because you're sitting Eric Rogers and John White. Then you've got you've got a lot of other problems. Ricky Collins Jr. Uh, listed as do, did not practice with a knee injury. Now him, I, I kind of I do expect to see Ricky Collins Jr. out there, and I know Sam and Champong was was listed on here, but I understand that he actually did go full today, even though he was listed as as did not practice. Uh, and Cam Judge and, and Daniel Braverman, I don't think we're going to see out there yet. Nick Arbuckle listed as limited. I, I don't think he will be dressed for the game. And then everyone else that's full. I don't know if I expect any of these guys to sit. So we're talking about Jack Kassar, Robinson Dan- Robertson Daniel, Patrick Lavoie, Cordero Law, Drake Nevis, Shane Ray, Jeff Richards, Shaq Richardson, uh, McLeod Bethel-Thompson, Philip Blake, and, and I believe Sam Achampong. So of all of those guys, I, is anyone sitting? Maybe Patrick Lavoie? Maybe? I, but I would love to see some of these guys back. Now, do you risk putting all of them back, JB? Or is this something where maybe you just put a few of them out there, especially guys that have been out for a long time? Like, do you bring back Law, Ray, Nevis all at once if you think they're good to go? Yeah, I, I think if, if you're if you're good to go, you're good to go. I I I wouldn't get cute about it. Um, if if they're healthy, you know, get them in. Let's go game speed, and it's a it's a good game to uh, to get a sense rather than starting in the Hamilton game. And uh, you know, I I think that. That'll be really important for for building up the the cohesion there instead of having random guys every week. You know, you want to try and start getting, I mean, ideally as close to the same 12 out there every every time. So I think this is the beginning of that, knock on wood. We can keep everybody, you know, relatively healthy. And, uh, you know, from a defensive point of view, I think the line's going to be much better. I think that's a huge improvement to the line. And I'm looking for a, a Jack Kassar special teams flash for sure. And it's going to be big because Ottawa is very good at returning. I, I won't spoil anything, but uh, I was very happy with you know what appeared to be the special teams game plan uh, at practice. It, uh, I, I think they seem to be aware uh, that uh, Ottawa has... Uh, has got some returns up their sleeve because there was a there was a lot of special teams, so that's obviously a good yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I think I think that I think that's the only way Ottawa can win. Like the only way Ottawa can win is is a you know a punt return or a kickoff touchdown and and field position wins with big returns. I, I don't think there's any other road and 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 an interception. Like I think that they're going to have to play the turnover special teams game. That's the only way. They beat the Argos. But Edmonton knew that last week and <laughs> still kept, you know, punting to and kicking uh, kicking off to, to Deadman only to well, watch think, it get returned all the way. I think my feelings on the Edmonton Elks have been well documented. <laughs> they have been. They have been. That's true. I see. I don't know if I the reason I don't think I bring all these guys back at once is I don't want to I don't want a repeat of what we saw happen with Eric Rogers in the Montreal game where they thought he was good to go. He, you know, he had been injured and it's, you know, something that he really hadn't practiced much all week. And then he thought, OK, I'm, I think I'm good to go. And then the day of the game, he's like, no, it's it's not ready. I, I can't go. And and so now suddenly Damien Jean-Pierre, who wasn't at all expecting to be in the game, is suddenly in the game. You know, what if what if that happens with two or three guys? That's just not something that I want to risk. So I think I would be very careful about how many you know, previously injured guys I would bring back because full practice doesn't mean you're hundred percent. There's a difference there. Full practice just means you are capable of making it through the full practice and you're not likely to re-injure yourself. That's why you're practicing full. That's why you're, you're letting the guys practice full, but it doesn't mean you're hundred percent. And so I think I'd be very cautious with who I bring back for this game, because again, I don't think we need all these guys for the Argos to win this game. All right, JB, let's move on to my favorite segment of the week. Let's do OCDC. I will be playing OC for first the Ottawa Red Blacks and then 
Uh, you will be the DC for the Ottawa Red Blacks, and we will switch it up after that. So from Ottawa's standpoint, so if I'm coming into this game as the Ottawa Red Blacks, I think having gone over the film all week with that win against Edmonton, I feel like I feel like Paul Apolis knows exactly what he's got in this team. And and I don't think it is necessarily the high praise that seemingly the entire country has been giving Caleb Evans all week. His numbers look very good. 15 of 22, 191 yards, three touchdowns. But when you look at his play, I, I didn't see the play of a quarterback that is going to win a lot of CFL games. And it's not fair for me to expect him to because it was his first ever CFL game. So, of course, it's it's not going to be perfect. But I, I think the Argos, after absorbing a week of film on Caleb Evans, are going to absolutely feast on him. And so... As Ottawa, I'm going to be highly cautious with this. And I think my game plan going in is really, really safe. Nothing that is going to give Toronto automatic points. And I'm quite happy, you know, in in this case, and and I hate to even say this because I hate this kind of football, but I think in terms of just preservation here, the offense's job is to eat up clock, let the defense rest, try and keep Toronto off the field as much as you can, You know, the occasional strike, I think every so often you're going to go for a home run play, but that's about it. And the focus is going to be don't turn the ball over, no mental mistakes, no fumbles, ball security, and you're relying on your defense to create turnovers. You're relying on special teams to to cash one in. And because I like you said, I I think I think Paul Apolis is fully aware that the only way Ottawa wins this game is if Toronto gives it to them, makes mistakes. And so my game plan as Ottawa is not to jeopardize that, to play safe, to play boring, to take time to frustrate Toronto and just chip away at it and short little passes underneath, take what's there, you know, throw it away or take a sack if it's not, hang on to that football. That is my extremely exciting game plan for the Ottawa Red I'm Blacks surprised. on Wednesday. I'm, I'm expecting Ottawa to come out with every trick in the book, but I'll get to that. But no, let, let's talk about that for a second. Like if they, I, I don't know what the motivation is for that because it's just going to go backwards. Like this, you, this season you're not going to. Well, I mean, to me, this season is a punt. Okay. Ottawa knows, okay. It's not going to end with a parade. So <laughs> to come in and to, to, to ruin the Argo special night with their throwbacks and the old team there. This is absolutely a game circled on Ottawa's schedule, the kind of game that a win can kind of get you through the next five or six games. Um, I would be very wary of a kitchen sink from these guys, like, you know, double passes, you know, um, halfback option, double reverse I, I just to me i think i think they just empty the empty the practice schedule uh trick plays in an attempt to uh to win anyway that's that that would be me but anyway let's let's i'm not the toronto dc yet no but you can't like but you can't accumulate like you can't put a whole drive together out of fake, fake field goal no formation. Not, not you, a whole drive i'm just saying i bet you i bet you we see a minimum of three trick plays this sounds like another coffee bet jb because i don't i don't think we're gonna see one okay i think it's gonna be a highly conservative offense because i think trick plays with this ottawa team if you if you run you run flea flickers and fumble rooskies and and uh you know hook and ladders you're gonna give up points that's like the toronto defense is gonna score on those plays and so i just don't i don't think it's worth it i think i think you i think every team in the cfl has a chance to win every week and I think if you play mistake free and hope that Toronto comes in overestimating their abilities, underestimating you, and maybe looking ahead to Hamilton, then I think you've got a, a shot. Toronto makes mistakes, Ottawa doesn't. I think they can be right in this football game. And so <laughs> I, I'm not going to jeopardize that. If Paul LaPolice thinks that he can line up and play with the Argos, then that's delightful. So he, I, he I can't hope, if the I Argos don't make mistakes. But if they do, you know full well, like this. <laughs> This this Argos team can implode. Yeah. Like we, we've seen games like that where things just go horribly wrong, and there are fumbles and mistakes. And yeah, but that's like, against better teams. So we haven't we haven't lost a game that we should have. I I I just think Ottawa's a tier below. I think you know I just think 
Yeah, I mean, we've lost to Saskatchewan and we lost to Hamilton and we lost to Winnipeg, but that's not these guys. I mean, I just think there's a tier and Ottawa is in the other one. And and I agree with you, but these weren't just losses you're talking about. We were blown out by Saskatchewan, Hamilton and Winnipeg. And to, not... to say that they Ottawa can't be in the game if Toronto, you know, turns the ball over four times. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, that doesn't. I, I think that's not that's not the offensive coordinator's concern. I, I know, but it, but he's the head coach, right? Like uh, that's yeah. I that's... mean, maybe maybe look maybe maybe they look to do that. I just think well, we'll see. I think you see three trick plays. I think you see fake field goal. I think you see yeah, like. Halfback option, all, a bunch of different things. They are going to eat Ottawa alive if they come out with that. I mm-hmm. hope we see that. I hope that's what Ottawa's plan is. Okay. All right. What do you have as the Ottawa defensive coordinator? Um. Well, I think, you know, Macbeth has been around the league a while and the book is pretty clear on him. I think that you you bait him into the deep throws. You, you basically test his patience. Will you take 12 underneath throws in a row? Okay, then we will give you that. Um, but I think you, you know, you play, you play three, you play four, uh, mix in a little cover one robber, but basically you're, you're, you beat up DJ Foster coming out of the backfield, uh, you know, on any passing play, you reroute him, you just all over him, make it, make it an endless day for him, especially if he doesn't have a backup. If, if it's just him, you know, that's going to be too much. So I would, I would wear him out like a, like an old boot and, I would just sit in that deep umbrella and say, wave to Macbeth and dare him to throw 15 10 yard passes in a row. Basically, what Toronto did to Montreal in that last yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty where... standard book on a big arm quarterback, right? You say, okay, can you, can you hit those outs all day? Maybe, but I know what you want to do, don't you? And just sit and just force him to take that underneath stuff. So that that's that's what I would do. I think that's I think that's the book on it. I'm not worried about the running game if White is out. I, I don't you know, that's gonna be a ton for Foster to 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 do because you know, no one else has shown the ability to run at all. So I, I'm not worried about the run at all. I'm just worried about the deep bomb. So I, I take that away. Let's switch teams. So coordinating for the Toronto Argonauts, my game plan this week is and this is gonna this is gonna also tie into my one thing which we got coming up in a little bit but my game plan this week isn't so much about beating ottawa to death as much as it is showing nothing having a very conservative game plan now that's not my approach for you know guaranteed blowing the doors off ottawa but i i think that's less of a concern again i think i think toronto needs to be able to beat ottawa without showing much and so my game plan is going to be very conservative. I'm, I'm really going to pound the ball. I'm going to pregame, you know, all week this week, be talking to the offensive line about running the football and about being able to run and run it again and run it again. And, you know, maybe it's AJ Wallet out there with DJ Foster, or whatever the combination is, we're basically just going to keep pounding the football and force Ottawa to come up and and make stops. And on those occasions, we can run some play action. We can run some RPOs, which I noticed that uh, McLeod Bethel-Thompson was running a lot more of last game in Montreal. They trusted him with a, a lot of those RPO decisions, and he correctly pulled it uh, every time he was given that opportunity. So those are, are, are things that I would do as well. And those aren't things that we're really going to be using much of against Hamilton. It's a very different game plan for Hamilton. So may as well just completely, you know, empty the shells of all the stuff we're not going to use against Hamilton and and just pound the rock, uh, do nothing but run the football against Ottawa. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully the offensive line responds positively to that challenge. But, you know, you look last week as bad as Edmonton was and as, as little as they had going on, James Wilder Jr. is averaging 6.4 yards a carry. And it's seemingly something that that Toronto should be able to do. Toronto could run at will against Winnipeg. And so I don't see any reason why they can't just challenge the O-line, challenge the running backs and say, this is the game plan. We're going to keep doing it. So make it work. Where do you go on the defensive side of the ball for the Argos? Uh, I, I think from a defensive point of view, what I mean, obviously special teams, if I could roll that in there, 
are huge. You know, Devontae Dedman is a weapon. You absolutely have to smother him. Um, that is priority one um, from a from a defensive point of view is special teams. I might even, you know, but you know, in terms of like what you're who who is going to play specials, uh, you know, maybe even try and roll in maybe a few more starters because um, that is absolutely priority one to to stop him. I think defensively, you set your edges. Um, to not let Evans roll out. Uh, he wants to roll out. He's, you know, he's pretty quick. He likes to run a little bit. So I think that you, you know, you, you set your edges, you keep him in the pocket, and and sort of, you know, I, I'm not that worried about his arm. I think, I think you, other than making sure you're setting your edges, I think you just straight up ball. I think you just you roll. I don't, I don't think Ottawa has anybody. We can't play in man. You know, I think you have your sort of standard you know, variations where you give him a look and then his zone. But I would stay in man and, uh, you know, just like you say, in terms of vanilla, I, I wouldn't blitz at all. I, I don't think that they're worthy of our blitzes. I think you set your edge, you play man, and, uh, you know, you go home at the end of the day. All right, JB, it's time for one thing. So the one thing that we want to see, and we've been hitting on a lot of these <laughs> this year they haven't always actually they've rarely turned into wins when we when we've hit them but (laughs) but we have been hitting them and when we have one it's not because of our one Mm. thing but so they they seem not to be tied into anything that happens on the football field but you know they they do come true so what is your what's your wish for for this week what's your one thing jb well i don't want to keep hammering on the the pick six so I'll, i'll give that a break although in truth that secretly is what i'm i'm wishing to see um, I think that what I would really like to see is uh, under 200 yards passing. I think that would be a nice bounce back. I think that'd be a nice game from the from the secondary. I know they have it in them. I'd love to see them smother Ottawa. Um, be interesting again. It's another another brick in the Chris Jones path. Um, so I would say under 200 yards passing. My one thing comes with a bit of a story, JB. I'm going to go back probably about a decade and I was coaching in a game where it was the last game of the regular season. The playoffs had already been set and the team that we were facing uh, in the first round of the playoffs sent their entire coaching staff to watch our game. And they sat out there with their clipboards and cameras and were going to take every bit of uh, information that they could out of our game because they hadn't had a chance to, to see us all season. Uh, we were, you know, some distance from them. And so knowing this and knowing that we really uh, had an edge on our opposition, I did nothing but call 34 lead until they left. Uh, that was that was my strategy. We spent an entire half just running 34 lead and it was the most boring football ever. But we were able to just, you know, only just barely pull out a win. They left. Uh, at halftime, uh, you know, furious with us. And that was, uh, that was the goal to show them nothing. And, you know, we were able to open it up a little bit in the second half when, when, when everyone had left, but, but that's what I want to see. I want to see exactly that. Hamilton is, Hamilton is so determined to beat the Argos this week, not only because the Argos beat them last time out, but because of the way that they lost to Montreal this past week, they want nothing more than to beat the Argonauts. And you can bet they are going to be not only glued to their television sets, they're going to be eating film all Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nothing but film of this Red Blacks game. And so my one thing is show nothing. I don't care if they do nothing but run the same three running plays over and over and over again. As long as it results in a win, show nothing. JB, it's time for our predictions. Where are you going for this week's score? Uh, I think the Argos take care of business. Uh, I think that the Argos win 24-10. <laughs> that's, that's surprisingly close to mine. And I always make you go first now since you've I got a habit of stealing my score. Mm. Um, but now it's going to look like I'm stealing your score. We're almost there. I, I've got 28-10 for the Argonauts. Honestly, like uh, this is not this is this is not the greatest sales pitch cuz I, you know, go to the game. It's going to be a great night honoring the 1991 Grey Cup team, giveaways, the the uniforms, everything else. It's it's going to be great that way. 
I think this is going to be a very boring football game. I hope it is. Because if it is, it means the Argos are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So this 28-10 is, in my mind, going to be just an absolute grind it out, beat the uh, Red Blacks into submission, and you know they, they'll somehow find a way to put up 10 points. The 28 points from the Argos will just be a steady dose of running the football. And, and, and if, if that holds true, the Argos are in a good spot. So it may not be the most interesting game. It's, I don't think it's going to look like some of the games this past weekend, which were fantastic CFL finishes. I, I just don't see that for, for this Wednesday's game. And to me, that's great. Well, that would just about do it for us on this episode of the pregame walkthrough. As always, if you get a chance to, make sure you check out all of our stuff on xsandargos.com. Please rate a review, subscribe to the podcast, help other Argos fans find out where we are. For JB, this is Ben Grant saying so long and may all your pre-snap reads be good ones. I'll see you. Go Toronto Argos, go, go, go. Pull together, fight the foe, foe.